Hi, my name is Laura. Welcome back to the land of Kakiak. Today, I'm going to talk to you about early homeschool science. So the base of our homeschool education is the Robinson curriculum. And if you're unfamiliar, I'll leave a link down below for you to check it out. Um, in a, a big discussion in um, the RC families when they're starting out is like, what do we do for early science? And so if you are an RC family looking for early science ideas, or if you're like an eclectic homeschooler, uh, this is the video for you. Okay, so my state of South Carolina requires science from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So that's kind of antithetical to Robinson's um, methodology on science and so I actually agree with him and his opinions on teaching science. So if you're um, more curious about that I suggest again going to the website and reading about their curriculum and um, but to solve that kind of discrepancy that I had to like do some thinking about what kind of science I was going to um, plan for our homeschool since I was required to uh, do that. So starting in kindergarten, um, I went with the Bernstein Bears Big Book of Science and Nature. And I wasn't sorry. The kids loved it. Uh, it's really sweet and the kids love uh, the Bernstein Bears. So yeah, again, if you can ever find, I've said this in other videos, resources with characters that your kids love it'll probably really sweeten the deal. I just went through this with Will when he was in the in kindergarten and it starts out, it goes through the year with them. So it starts out New Year's Day. So I just used this as like the spine, you know, and we just read it. Uh, we talked about um, a year, what makes a year. We talked about, you know, the, uh, the orbit and how we go around the sun and that takes 365 days approximately, you know, and we talked about, you know, the first three months of winter and weather and um, so we kind of use this to just be like the spine of our curriculum and if we want to look into stuff we would look um, there's this YouTube channel I think it's Psy is it Psy Kids or something like that I'll try to find it I'll try to link it and we watched a ton of these little this cute redheaded lady doing these videos um, about you know, science topics for kids. So yeah, it talks about snow, snowflakes. So it goes, so it goes through the seasons and um, yeah, they just really like this. And like he's, you know, he's gonna be seven. He's gonna be seven in two days. <laughs> I, that just really snuck up on me. I gotta get ready for his birthday. Anyways, but he still looks at this and it's been sitting in his room on his bookshelf. He still looks at it and now his little brother looks at it and Bo is four. So I'm going to use this with Bo next year for his, you know, kindergarten science. Okay. No stress, super easy, affordable. I'll link it for you down below. Okay. So the next step up. So I was really trying to work within Robinson, what I, we had at our disposal. So if you're an RC family in the bonus section, there is a whole bunch of articles um, called The Famous Scientist. It's like all the way at the very bottom. I just printed them all out and there's, I really like the illustrations in them. They're really colorful and they're just these short articles or like one or two pages and they'll give a famous scientist and uh, something that they're really well known for. And um, so I printed those all out for him. We like we made a joke to this day. Where is the, this guy? To this guy, if you can see his picture, <laughs> it's August Picard. And we looked up his real pictures online too, because there's actual like pictures of him doing his experiments. Because he's, you know, back in the 1930s. Anyways, he has like this enormous uh, head, and you know, we were like, obviously, he's related to your mom. <laughs> So I'm like, I did totally like the huge forehead club. Anyways, we're always like, oh yeah, old uh, Uncle Picard. And we talk about him. It's mom's, uh, mom's long lost relative. Anyways, but that's cool. But like, so we would use these as the basis anyways um, of our science curriculum. 
and there's so many of them i don't know how many there are in here but this is like six i think i want to say it's like 68 pages long and if you do like one a week you know these will go really far and I also made up a little list of famous scientists right here. And I'm gonna link this stuff all down for you below. I mean, I can't link the articles because that's within the curriculum, but you could do something similar. So I made my own list of the famous scientists and I added a few because we had some of these like Who Was series books. Again, these are like so affordable I just love them. I'll link them down below the ones that we got. Um, so I added some of those that weren't in, that we didn't have articles on, and I created a little assignment around them. Like this, and so I wanted this to be something that, you know, a fourth, fifth grader um, could do on their own without much, I, I just, you know, I just want them to do it. And um, I wanted to look over at the end, and so it's a famous a scientist report. It's really kind of more of an outline. And it just has like the questions like um, when and where uh, were they born, when and where did they die, family and early life, formal education, mentors, career, greatest achievements, what are they known for, and how did their work help future scientists. That's the hardest one because a lot of times, I mean, kids don't know, right? That's okay. If they don't know it, that's fine. But um, then I give some instructions. Um, on what to do Monday, either if you want to do Monday through Friday is level one or Monday through Saturday or Sunday for doing the six days level two. And um, so this can be a whole week, um, a whole week assignment for them, keep them busy, just they work a little bit at it. So what else will they need? So they would need their articles, right? Or, you know, their books to read. And these read, they read these really fast. So it looks like a lot, but it's really fast. And then, so they, like I said, they were doing an article day. They'd read their article. Then they would, I'd have them go to our encyclopedias and look up, I mean, I, we never, there was never an art, uh, an artist. There was never a scientist who wasn't in the um, encyclopedias that we have, um, I don't think. And um, so he, they would look up the article. I want them to start learning to compare sources to see if there's any discrepancies. Like we never, uh, I don't think we ever did find any discrepancies between the articles and the encyclopedias. Our encyclopedias are from the 60s, I believe. Um, so, but I want it to get in, into his mind to start comparing sources and looking for discrepancies, right? Like what overlaps, like what's true, well, what's the same is probably accurate or more likely, you know? Um, and then I'd say the next day, I, he, he did like to look up a YouTube video. There's a lot of uh, like physics professors and things that will do experiments um, and put them online and that was super cool um, and to see and so I would let him find an appropriate video so if you allow some screen time for things like research um, you could do that too and then on Thursday they would revise and edit their report outline so I'd have him go back because you know he's like making notes in here as he goes so he might try to answer these questions the first time through while he's reading his article or his book, right? And then when he goes to his YouTube um, and his um, encyclopedia, <laughs> his encyclopedia article, you know, he might be making more notes uh, to say, what did they say? You know, if he couldn't find something, you know, I might let him look up, try to find an article online, but I would just try to help him source it. Um, Cause you know, they're still pretty young. And Wikipedia is not the best source, but sometimes Wikipedia is a good article and they list sources at the bottom. And sometimes you can click on those and go and look through at them. So I'm trying to teach him to be a little more, you know, to be diligent with his research without making it too big of you things. I'm just trying to basically get, you know, two or three pieces of backup information too and I was trying to find something that he didn't have to leave the house like I don't want to have to go to the library every week if I you know necessarily so I have access to the internet I have these articles and I have encyclopedias like physical encyclopedias so if you're not an RC family you could just um, download this list that I have for you and you could just you know look up articles like either in the encyclopedia or you could go to the library and pick up a book 
or you could uh, just you know find these all these people are online you can find information because they're famous they're not like obscure right they're not trying to hide it from us and like whenever we're not sure what we're doing you ever do something else I always know I still have more scientist articles and so uh, we can go back you know to those at any time right so I was back back up just a little bit I mean I went I'm from kindergarten to like fourth grade now I'm going back <laughs> probably to like first second third grade this is another option my inspiration comes from rc this isn't totally rc you know i'm a little rc plus i should have turned off my phone okay and um on the reading list the, like one of the very first books is the tale of jolly robin by arthur scott bailey so I love those stories so much and I use them. I went to, I think there's two, I wanna say, in on the reading list, but you, I mean, you could read whatever more. He's a ton of them and they're all centered around some animal. And he's basically giving you um, an animal study, right? Like a habitat kind of study on, you know, but based around this one animal. And as far as I can see, everything is like very accurate and, um, the, and the stories are funny like I love children's stories that I'm laughing at them you know so um I went to Project Gutenberg and I printed out um like four at a time I think I printed out eight so far but I can fit four in one of my big combs that I combined with we use those for extra like we're bridging into the RC reading program we're using those stories and I use them, I um, have another assignment that I use for like a reading comprehension kind of assignment, and like writing assignment. But I also use those same stories, you can use those same stories for your science. And this is how I do it. So as you're reading, let's say you're reading The Tale of Jolly Robin, I have two of these that I made, I call them study alongs. I went through and I wrote up, like I kind of followed the story. Um, of like what was happening in the story and then I would but I would have some built-in you know things they can do and then I put links in it so um, I'll put a link to this document down there too for you but if you open it up and you click on this it'll send you to different pages like where I was pulling information from um, for our own lessons like as we were going so I have places for them to take video notes in it and like you could do this yourself you could make this yourself but if you just don't have time I have one for uh, Jolly Rob Robin and one for um, Solomon Owl, the Tale of Solomon Owl. And they're really cheap and all the work's done for you. You just have to like maybe help them, you know, pull some stuff off the internet here and there. That is there for you. And then the other way that I use these books is um, with a animal research assignment. And this is, uh, I'll link this down below for you too. Um, so they'll be reading their story about whatever animal it is and then as they go they can start filling in their animal research table so they're gonna know like you know say what animal it is say it's Benny Badger right so maybe it's Badger scientific name they can look that up easily uh, what class is it mammal fish bird you know describe a male female young their diet so it's just kind of introducing them to again like researching this is all information is pretty easily found online or if you just want to whatever book you're reading let's say you're reading the tale of patty muskrat you just go to the library that week grab as many books on muskrats right as you can and look through those as you're you know researching and taking your time and just like we're setting up the habit of study and teaching them how to find information on their own and so yeah so they've got that to fill out and then i have a you know where they can draw a picture whatever animal it is and they you know put the name down here and they can label the picture if they want and then i just gave them an interesting facts about page so they can like write anything extra they come across i mean these animals are fascinating so yeah so that's another one this is going to be a free resource i'm going to um, put on my tpt store so i'll link it down below if you want to grab this you can just like print these out. That's what I love about, I love just pre-printing stuff. Like you can print out like 10 of these and just put them in a little file and they just can grab it themselves. You know, you don't have to prep anything and just go get, read your story, get whatever book you want. And it's all kind of tied together and it helps them and enhances their understanding of the story that they're reading. And they can, you could do multiples because all the stories have multiple animals that they're interacting with and other, other characters or other animals. 
So, you know, if you wanted them to do like one, two, three, if you want to stretch out one story, you could like make a, really make a whole science curriculum for a year out of just, you know, one or two, two or three maybe books um, like this, the Tuck Me in Tales and stuff like that. Be creative, be, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go out and buy like super expensive science curriculums for first graders, in my opinion which is what I'm here to give you, right? Those are some of my thoughts. Those are my like, really easy go-to things I have done, inexpensive, effective things I would do again. I like don't regret any of those. They are building certain skills that I want them to build, like research, organization, be just coming, becoming familiar uh, with certain type of scientific terms that they're gonna come across while they're researching, so it's not all foreign to them. Um, I don't do any type of like quizzing or, you know, uh, right now the the big um, goal is just to put in the effort that's part of the training of the child training of the mind right and setting up good work habits and stuff so that's what I'm mostly working on um, I have some other resources I have more to uh, to give you as examples for things you can use for science um, I'll make another video on it because this one's getting kind of long but if you have anything in particular you're interested in in the science link it down below I'd also like to know how many of you are RC uh, homeschoolers and how many of you are maybe like eclectic do you call yourself Charlotte Mason like you don't know are you just here are you just like researching um, let me know in the comments because I kind of like to get a feel for who the audience is so I can um, gear my content towards you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>